Shalom, everyone, and welcome to Just a Word. This is Kazar Eliyahu, and I'm here with another video. This time, we are going to be looking at a speech that Benjamin or Benjamin Netanyahu made that showed us, that showed me that only the Most High can stop this from going into World War III. We are going to use some scriptures from the Bible and some other books that show us that this is headed for World War III. Only the Most High can stop it. All right? So let's look at the speech that we're talking about, and we're going to take an extract from our video. So let's go and see what exactly I am speaking about, okay? Let's go ahead and play the clip, and then we'll talk about why what he said is significant. Our war against Hamas is a test for all of humanity. It is a struggle between the axis of evil of Iran, Hezbollah, and Hamas, and the axis of freedom and progress. We are the people of the light. They are the people of darkness, and light shall triumph over darkness. All right, so hear this. They are bringing themselves as the custodians of righteousness. You see, when these people take our identity, and it is described about us, you are a holy people unto Yahuwah. Yahuwah has chosen you as a holy people above all people upon the face of the earth. What is happening? It is that they are now taking our identity, taking everything for us and attributing to it to them. But we're going to show you that these are not the children of Israel. These are, we're going to show you scriptures. These are the children of Japheth mixed with the children of Edom. So they take our identity, take our attributes, take our promises, and then attribute it to them. We, being the people of righteousness, people of the light, they are claiming it to be theirs. So what they are going to do, set up themselves as children of the light, Take our end time promises of us entering in the land, of us being transformed into a, a, a holy nation, totally holy nation, in which we will destroy all the enemies that are before us. They are using this and attributing it to themselves. And if you know, as a believer, as an Israelite, you know these things that are promised to you. You know that when it begins, it's not going to stop. When you believe that this is happening, you are not going to stop and say no and pause. This is something that we don't believe it will stop, knowing what the scriptures actually say. The Most High has the final say. But anyway, let's hear what he has to say. Israel. There's a profound belief in the eternity of the Jewish people. We shall realize the prophecy of Isaiah. There will no longer be stealing at your borders and your gates will be of glory. So you see that? There will no longer, he said, stealing. I think it's violence that is in the word. At your door. So what does it mean? It means he wants to clear out everything from his door. Yes? And they are looking to this as the final solution for Yasharal. The final solution for Yasharal. This is a preparation for an anti-Messiah. The final solution. If it is a final solution, that means they will not stop until they have achieved their goal. Together we will fight. Together we will win. You see? Together we will fight, together we will win. So they will not stop. That is why he said he's not accepting any ceasefire. It's not on his card. The Orthodox Jews, the rabbis, have been pressing the leaders of Israel for some time to usher in their Messiah. This is what they're doing. They are bringing this final battle to usher in their Messiah. But, hey, the Bible actually tells you what this battle entails, and we are going to look at it. Let's hear a little bit more. Um, let's go. In this clip, Netanyahu seems to be quoting a section of a significant biblical prophecy from the book of Isaiah. In 6018, we read, Violence shall no more be heard in your land, devastation or destruction within your borders. You shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. Now, in context, this prophecy describes Israel's exile as they were beaten down and attacked for years, but Isaiah prophesied that there would be a reversal of their fortune where Israel would be restored and they would suffer no more violence. Of course, this is attributable to us. We who have been beaten down in captivity for so many years. These people have not been be beaten down. You're white. You're rich. You're powerful. You're strong. 
You have one of the greatest armies in the world. Beaten down? Beaten down? Do you know beaten down? Have you ever been in slavery? Have you ever been enslaved? Have your people been enslaved for generations after generations, hundreds of years upon hundreds of years? Eh? Have you been abused, hated, despised for no reason at all? Even when you try to be nice and good to the other nations, they continue to hate you. Uh, all you do is go around and do things that people hate. When we do things, even that people like, they still hate us. Yes? This is our prophecy that they are taking up, and this is why it spells trouble for the world. Because our redemption, our rising up, is the end-time solution for the world. They are thinking that they are the end-time solution for the world, and that the whole world will go into captivity under them. The goyim, as they call them, will go into captivity under them. Let's continue. But if you notice, going back to verse 13 and 14, we see that Lebanon is mentioned. The verse says, The glory of Lebanon will come to you, the juniper, the fir, and the cypress together, to adorn my sanctuary, and I will glorify the place for my feet. The children of your oppressors will come bowing before you. All who despise you will bow down at your feet and will call you to the city of the Lord, Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Now, this may be significant because the conflict between Israel and Hezbollah, who, by the way, is the anti-Israel militant group based in Lebanon, seems to be heating up. So it appears that Netanyahu is using this passage to address the current situation. Given this, it appears that he believes that the end result will be Lebanon or Syria, like the oppressors in verse 14, acknowledging Israel's restored status. But he thinks that this will only be accomplished through the complete extermination of the threat of Hamas first. So you see... This is the restoration of Yasharal. That is the end time. From, hey, the restoration of Yasharal is no easy thing. So these people are going to continue their war thinking that they are going to be fulfilling end time prophecy. This is serious. All right. Now, I want you to pay close attention to the next verse, which Netanyahu seems to be referencing in his speech as well. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated with no one passing through, I will make you an everlasting pride. You see that? With no one passing through. <laughs> How many people have been passing through Israel? Israel is one of the most, uh, one of the greatest um, holiday destinations in the world. How many people aspire to go to Israel and go to Israel each year? Right now, I'm in one of the top tourist destinations in the world. This is Israel, the land of sun, sea, and sightseeing. It's a country with thousands of years of history. Everything is back open. The beaches, the clubs, the bars. Come on over, it's so much fun. And the locals are really excited for you to be here. I mean, it's been a while. Best of all, all of the malls and street shops are open. I mean, what's a vacation without some good shopping? How many people? So many. People keep passing through. This is speaking about Yerushalayim that has laid waste, that has been laid waste. Yeah? That is now desolate, that is going to be resuscitated. Our Yerushalayim, not their Jerusalem. Notice the next verse though. You will also suck the milk of nations and suck the breasts of kings. Then you will know that I, Yahuwah, am your savior. These people are looking to fulfill this. They are looking to be kings of the earth and all nations serve them. Do you think these people are going to stop this war so easily? Yeah? Let's continue. When we look, we're going to see a little further and we're going to see who the scriptures say exactly who they are. All right, let's continue. Now, this seems to run parallel to his statement that Israel will be reborn as a nation from the pain of this war. And from the pains of this war, we will be reborn as a nation. We will be reborn as a nation. You see that? Now, do you think the Muslim countries are going to stand by and watch this happen? What they want to do, they want to decimate, obliterate Hamas totally. That is why they're going around killing so many thousands of people. The Muslims will stand just so long and no longer. We already see Yemen joining the fight, Hezbollah joining the fight, Turkey speaking out harshly 
And it would be far-fetched to see Turkey join the fight sometime. Iran, their stark enemy, has indirectly already joined the fight. It is not going to be easy. Let's continue. The current afflictions that Israel is suffering from will bring about restoration and glory, much like the verse states. But again, by referencing this prophecy, he seems to be suggesting that this will only be achieved with war taking place. And it's because of Netanyahu's call for Israeli citizens to unite and personally arm themselves, combined with his announcement of the impending ground evasion in Gaza, some people see Netanyahu's appeal to this prophecy as a call for Israel to enact a holy war in Gaza to finally possess the land as they believe they will in the end times. The main point in Netanyahu's message that's been missed by everyone, including even the translator, was the reason he chose this specific prophecy in the first place. If we read it again, we see that it says, violence shall no more be heard in your land, devastation or destruction within your borders, you shall call your wall salvation and your gates praise. What people might not know is there's a specific Hebrew word that's used in the first word of that prophecy that Netanyahu is citing. The translator translated the word as stealing. There will no longer be stealing at your borders. But if we go back to try to find the word stealing in Hebrew, we won't find it. Instead, the Hebrew word that we find is the word for violence, and that word is Hamas. The word Hamas in Hebrew means violence. And so throughout this speech, Netanyahu made it clear that his goal is to exterminate Hamas as an organization so that they could be heard no more. So it appears that what's really going on is that he seems to be correlating the word violence or Hamas in Isaiah 60, 18 with the literal Hamas group with whom they're currently at war. By quoting this specific verse of prophecy that literally ties to the non-existence of Hamas to Israel's salvation or safety, he connects the prophetic fulfillment of Israel's ultimate security with the destruction of the actual Hamas organization. All right, so you see, he wants to totally obliterate Hamas, equating the word for violence with Hamas, and so obliterating Hamas. So... We're going to look and show some scriptures now to show why only the Most High can stop this from going into a world war. Now, in the book of Jubilees, the book of Yabalim, there is an account of Isaac. Before Isaac went into Egypt, he went into the land of the Philistines. And the Philistines treated Isaac badly because they stopped up his well and um, strove with his men about the different wells. When uh, um, Isaac would dig a well, they would come and claim the well, etc. And then Isaac said something very significant. Book of Jubilees, chapter 24, verse 22, and this is on page 54. And this is Isaac, right? And Yahuwah appeared to him that night on the new moon of the first month and said to him, I am Yahuwah, the Almighty of Abraham, your father. Fear not, for I am with you and shall barak you and shall surely multiply your seed as the sand of the earth for the sake of Abraham, my servant. And he built an altar there, which Abraham, his father, had first built. And he called upon the name of Yahuwah and he offered sacrifice to the Almighty of Abraham, his father. And they digged a well and they found living water. And the servants of Yitshak dig another well and did not find water. And they went and told Yitshak that they had not found water. And Yitshak said, I have sworn this day to the Philistines, and this thing has been announced to us. And they called the name of that place the well of the oath, for there he had sworn to Abimelech and Ahuzath his friend, and Fikal the prefect, or his host. And Yitzhak knew that day that under constraint he had sworn to them to make shalom with them. And Yitzhak on that day cursed the Philistines and said, Cursed be the Philistines unto the day of wrath and indignation from the midst of all nations. May Yahuwah make them a derision and a curse and an object of wrath and indignation in the hands of the sinners of the Gentiles of the sinners, the Gentiles, and in the hands of Kittim. Here we go. He cursed the Philistines in the hands of the sinners, the Gentiles, and in the hands of Kittim. Who are 
Kittim, who are the Gentiles. We're going to show you that this is the role that these people who call themselves Israel are actually playing. This is the role that they are playing. So, the Philistines will be afflicted in the hands of the sinners, the Gentiles, and in the hands of Kittim. These that I'm showing you here, these are who these people who say they are Jews are. This is the affliction. This that you're watching with this taking place, it is not the affliction of the true children of Israel, the fulfillment of the end time prophecies, but it is a fulfillment of this in which the Philistines were cursed to be persecuted at the hands of the sinners, the Gentiles, the children of Japheth. These are the Gentiles. Let's go to the book of Habereshith. Genesis chapter 10, verse 1, to see who the Gentiles are. And then we are going to look at who the children of Kittim are and show you that these are the one and the same people who are waging this war. So let's go to the book of Habereshith, the book of Genesis chapter 10, starting at verse 1. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. Let's look at the descendants of Japheth. The sons of Japheth, Goma, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Tiras. And the sons of Goma, Ashkenaz. Which group makes up the largest group of people who say they are Jews? Ashkenaz. These are not the, the children of Yasharal. These are not the descendants of Jacob. These are the descendants of Japheth. And the sons of Goma, Ashkenaz, and Riphath, and Targama. No, Javan is another one. And the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim, who did Isaac say would afflict the Philistines? Who? The Gentiles. And Kittim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles. So when Isaac speaks about the Gentiles, he's speaking about the children of Japheth. By these were the eyes of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. So the Philistines today are being afflicted by the children of the Gentiles, by the children of Kittim. We're going to see who are the children of Kittim. Who are the children of Kittim? For that, we'll go to the book of Joshua and we'll go to Joshua chapter 10 and verse. 16. And the children of Chittim or Kittim are the Romim who dwell in the valley of Canopia by the river Tibro. The children of Kittim are the Romans. Now, what is the significance of the Romans? For that, let's go to the book of Joshua. And we'll go to chapter 90 to see the significance of the Romans. Chapter 90, starting at verse 1. We're going to read from verse 1 to 11. At that time in the fifth year after the children of Yasharal had passed over Jordan, after the children of Yasharal had rested from their war with the Canaanites, at that time great and severe battles arose between Edom and the children of Kittim. And the children of Kittim fought against Edom. Remember, the Kittim are the Romaim, the Romim, the Romans. And Abianus, king of Kittim, went forth in that year, that is, in the 31st year of his reign, and a great force with him of the mighty men of the children of Kittim. And he went to Seir to fight against the children of Esau. And Hadad, the king of Edom, heard of his report, and he went forth to meet him with a heavy people and strong force, and engaged in battle with him in the field of Edom. And the hand of Kittim prevailed over the children of Esau, and the children of Kittim slew of the children of Esau two and twenty thousand men, and all the children of Esau fled from before them. 
And the children of Kittim pursued them, and they reached Hadad, king of Edom, who was running before them, and they caught him alive and brought him to Abianus, king of Kittim. And Abianus ordered him to be slain, and Hadad, king of Edom, died in the forty-eighth year of his reign. And the children of Kittim continued their pursuit of Edom, and they smote them with a great slaughter, and Edom became subject to the children of Kittim. The children of Esau became subject to the Romans. And the children of Kittim ruled over Edom. And Edom became under the hand of the children of Kittim and became one kingdom from that day. This is how the Romans mixed with the children of Esau. And from that time they could no more lift up their heads, and their kingdom became one with the children of Kittim. That's it. All right? And Abianus placed officers in Edom, and all the children of Edom became subject and tributary to Abianus, and Abianus turned back to his own land, Kittim. And when he returned, he renewed his government and built for himself a spacious and fortified palace for a royal residence, and reigned securely over the children of Kittim and over Edom. So that's how they became one. So let's go back to the book of Jubilees. And Yitchak on that day cursed the Philistines and said, Curse be the Philistines unto the day of wrath and indignation from the midst of all nations. May Yahuwah make them a derision and a curse and an object of wrath and indignation in the hands of the sinners, the Gentiles, and in the hands of Kittim. The children of Ashkenaz, etc. These are the children of Japheth who are mixed in with the children of Kittim. Well, the children of Kittim are, the, are, are also the children of Japheth. Ashkenaz mixed in with Kittim because the Romans spread their kingdom and spread and spread and interbred and they interbred until their seed was among all of these people. We have a video teaching on our website called Who Are the Edomites Today that traced that, that goes into a whole lot of details to show who the children of Esau are today. Okay? So let's go back to what Isaac said. And whosoever escapes the sword of the enemy and the Kittim, may the righteous nation root out in judgment from under heaven. So may the children of Israel, the true children of Israel, wipe them out. For they shall be the enemies and foes of my children throughout their generations upon the earth. So that is why they have a saying in Jamaica, cut no business in a foul fight, which means the rooster has no part in a fight between hens. So these two people who are fighting are our enemies, people who hate us and despise us. So we don't take sides. We don't cheer for any one of them. Because it says, if they escape this sword that is going through, it is our people who are going to root them out eventually. Okay? Because verse 30 says, And no remnant shall be left to them, nor one that shall be saved on the day of the wrath of judgment. For destruction and rooting out and expulsion from the earth is the whole seed of the Philistines reserved, and there shall no longer be left for these captorim a name or a seed upon the earth. For though he ascend unto heaven, there shall he be brought down. And though he make himself strong on earth, there shall he be dragged forth. And though he hide himself among the nations, even from there shall he be rooted out. And though he descended into, descend into Sheol, there also shall his condemnation be great. And there shall also he shall have no shalom. And if he go into captivity by the hands of those that seek his life, shall they slay him on the way. And neither name nor seed shall be left to him on all the earth, for into eternal malediction shall he depart. And thus it is written and engraved concerning him, the Philistines, on the heavenly tablets to do to him on the day of judgment, so that he may be rooted out of the earth. So what it is saying, it is saying that the false Israel, 
the descendants of the Gentiles and Kittim will first be the ones who afflict the Palestinians and then the true children of Israel will complete the rest. What a sad thing that is taking place today. All right? These are end time things that are happening, people. We got to know what is happening. All right? Now, in the book of God, the seer, it tells us about these people, who they are, and tells us that they are the children of Edom. I forgot this. Because I know when I tell you that these are the, the descendants of the Romans, they are the children of Edom, you are going to be asking, how can you just be saying that they are the children of Edom? What is the proof? Now, if you go to First Chronicles 29, 29, it speaks about a particular book. Let's go there. First Chronicles 29, 29. Now, the acts of David the king, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Samuel the seer, and in the book of Nathan the prophet, and in the book of God the seer. And we're going to look in this book of God the seer to see and let it tell us who these so-called Jews actually are. The book of God the seer, page 11. Woe to you, Edom! that sits in the land of Kittim in the north of the sea. There we have confirmation of the book of Joshua. Edom sits in the land of Kittim in the north of the Mediterranean Sea. In the north of the Mediterranean Sea, there sits Kittim, nicely poised, like a, a boot kicking a ball. In the land of Kittim in the north of the sea. For your destroyers will emerge from a terrible nation. They will not even leave you a remnant. Oh, for you said, I sit on high, and only I have a covenant with the Alua of Aluim. For Yahuwah chose me instead of his holy people, for he abhorred them. So these are the pretenders now. Those who say they are Jews and are not, and those also of Christianity who preach replacement theology. Everybody seeking to replace us. Poor us, the children of Yasharal. But Hamashiach had told us in Revelation 2.9, I know that tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. So, poor us. Everybody wants to replace us. And his former people, despised and rejected, did not truly know Yahuwah the Father because they did not know his image the Son. This is specifically speaking about Christianity. We are truly wise and intelligent. We know Yahuwah and his law. We know his image and presence. Raka Kadosh. But thus says Yahuwah, because you rose up in pride to brag about the Aluwa of Elohim, know that you will perish in your conceitedness. For why would you put confidence in man whose life is like a vapor, which begins in the morning and is gone by noonday, placing him to sit beside Aluwa? These are Christians who place Jesus Christ, a man, to sit beside Yahuwah. A man of their image to sit beside Yahuwah. For it is not you whom I formerly knew. And where is the bill of divorce of my people that you said would be a prey? Show it to me. Now, let's go. We're going to look at those who say they are Jews and are not now. Your corpses will fall among my people. O oh, jealous Yahuwah, come out, come out of your place and smite Edom. And he's going to tell us now who are Edom. Consume them. Come to Zarephath, come to Sepharad. Edom is in Sepharad, the Sephardic Jews, the second largest group of Jews today. These are Edomites. Come to Ashkenaz, Ashkenazi Jews is the largest group of Jews today. These are the children of Edom. Come to Germania, Germania, Germany, I think Austria, those places were involved. This is where part of their language, Yiddish, originated. All right? These are the children of Edom. They shall come and fall in the lowest pit, in destruction and in the shadow of death, for your mouth will fail you and no one will help you. Destruction is slated for these people. They are the Romans. And we go back to what Isaac said. Isaac said, May Yahuwah make them a derision and a curse and an object of wrath and indignation. These are the Philistines. In the hands of the sinners 
the Gentiles and the hands of Kittim, who are the Romans, who are the children of Edom. That's what's taking place today, people. This is not true Israel doing this. These are the children of Edom. The Most High has set it out so sweetly and nicely. These people taking on our identity and all of that. And the Most High just comes and he just uses them to fulfill his prophecy. All right? Today, I'm going on Facebook and I saw this banner show up. It says... DNA evidences most professed Jews are not biological descendants of Abraham. DNA studies confirm that 97% of people who call themselves Jews are not descendants of Abraham. In 2001, Dr. Ariella Oppenheim, a biologist at Hebrew University, published the first extensive study of DNA and the origin of the Jews. Her research found that virtually all the Jews came from Kazar blood. The newest DNA research science from Dr. Eran Elaik, an associate at the Makusik Nathan's Institute of Genetic Medicine, Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, has confirmed that the various groups of Jews in the world today do not share a common genetic origin and their genome is largely Kazar. In fact, DNA research shows that the Palestinians actually have more Israelite blood than do the Khazar Jews. Oh, ironic. These DNA research results should cause you to question everything you know about modern-day Jews and the state of Israel. I was not looking for that, and then it just came upon me. All right? So the Philistines, by the way, are among the nations in the great conspiracy in Psalm 83 who want to ensure that as a nation, our name is destroyed from off the face of the earth. So if you go to Psalm 83, something that if you've been watching us, we go to almost daily because it shows a worldwide conspiracy against the children of Yasharal. And if you go to verse 7, it tells you the culprits. It says, Gebal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. These are those who do what? They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Yasharal may be no more in remembrance. It's not speaking about that name of Yasharal that falls name. It's speaking about us, the hidden ones. Okay? The hidden ones, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Not those who profess to be Jews, those of us who are hidden and the world does not know us. All right? So this is what we are saying now that this would take a miracle for this not to go to world war. Why? These Jews have convinced themselves that they are us, that they are the true children of Israel. They have convinced themselves that this is the true end time battle now, the final battle for control of this world, the final battle before they control the entire world. They are convinced that that is it. And they are convinced that they have to wipe out violence or Hamas off the face of the earth, that their borders have to be cleared. That means they are going to try to commit genocide with Hamas. It is a miracle. It will take a miracle if this does not go into World War III. Why? Let's go to Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. And let's see why it will take a miracle for this not to go to World War II. Now, Revelation verse 6, verse 1 and 2, we have done this before in many videos showing that the disease that was upon the earth called with the number 19 and the letter C before it, this was the first horse, the white horse. The seven seals have been broken. The white horse has gone out and that white horse is the disease. The second seal is the red horse and Power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. This is a war horse. And we've looked at it so many times before. We don't want to go into it in detail. Might put the link of the videos that we've looked on underneath it. Hopefully I remember to do that. This is the red horse. This is NATO-led alliance led by the United States and NATO, the red horse. And there was given unto him a great sword, a sword NATO, in Revelation 3, it says, Who can make war with the beast? 
because NATO is the most powerful military alliance in the whole world. So he was given unto him a great sword. But then in the third seal is economic collapse, which sandwiches the second and the fourth seal, because the fourth seal is a pale horse. And if you look at the word pale there, it is from the Greek word chloros, which actually means green. This green horse, and in Psalm 74, 4, it says, they set up their ensigns or their flags for signs. The pale horse is the green horse of the Muslim because power was given to him over the fourth part of the earth and 25% of the earth approximately now is Muslim. Power is given to him over a quarter of the earth to kill with sword. And we know that the sword is one of the um, symbols of Muslim. Even I think Saudi Arabia, I think, has the sword on their flag and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. So in between the second and the fourth seal, which is NATO, led by the United States, and the Muslims, Islam, is economic collapse. This is what's coming up on the earth. So the second and the fourth seal are going to clash. This is what is happening today on this earth because NATO supports Israel. And the Muslim nations are behind Hamas. So it will take a miracle. Gonna take a miracle if this does not go into the Third World War. All right? So this is Kazar Eliyahu just sharing that with you at this moment. Yeah, evidence there that the people who say they are Jews and are not are the children of Japheth mixed with the children of Edom. And these are there as prophesied to destroy the Philistines, to destroy the Palestinians, to fulfill the curse of Isaac. All right? These are not the true children of Israel, but they believe they are, and they believe that they are doing the will of the Most High. And that is why this is so dangerous. All right? So, thank you for watching and or listening. All right? Hope you found this informative. Until next time, Shalom.